Yo, what up everyone? Today, today is all about being normal. Everything going on in my life, today I wanna to be normal. It's gonna be therapeutic. So this video is about three things. Number one, little normalcy for this guy right here. Number two, in my time away, go back and check out my last videos. A lot of you know what's going on with me. Check those out. But in my time away, I've had a lot of products sent to me that I wanted to test and I wanted to do specific videos on. But with everything going on, I just can't do that. So today we're going to talk about a lot of those products. We're going to do an updated tour of Silver Hammer Tower. And in the course of that, we're going to not only talk about those products sent to me, but we're also going to talk about all the things that I've updated since that last video a couple months ago, because in the short time, even with everything going on, I've added a lot. So join us as we give you a little updated tour. Let's get started. <music> What up everybody, it's George Langebeer with Silver Hammer Surveillance. Here on the channel, we talk smart home tech, we talk home security. Here lately, if you've been watching, you know I've had to talk a little bit more about the man behind Silver Hammer Surveillance, what's going on with me. I was diagnosed with cancer, it sucks. I felt like I've had to give some updates, but today is all about being normal. Normally we have videos every Tuesday. You gotta bear with me in the time upcoming, because I don't know if I'm gonna be able to stick with that, but I'm gonna try, and I promise you, I'm going to get back to normal. I'm going to beat this thing and we're going to be back for good. But today is going to be very therapeutic and I'm looking forward to talking smart home tech again. Yay. All right. So today, that brings us today. Silver Hammer Tower. A couple months ago, we moved in. After a week of cramming this thing with smart home tech, we did a tour. Delaney joined me. It was a beautiful thing. Happier times at that, on that day. But anyway, we're going to be happy today. So since then, I've had several products sent to me. I'm looking off to the side because they're all around me. And I wanted to do reviews. I wanted to do specific videos on them because of everything going on with me. I have not been able to do that. So today, we're going to give those companies some love because I thank them so much for sending me these products and wanting me to give my opinion on them. But I just haven't been able to give them the attention they deserve. But today, we're going to try to give them as much as I can. So we're going to talk about those products that have been sent to me. But we're also going to talk about some general tech that I've added. And then I have one complaint with the company that's very disappointing. So stay tuned for that. But that's what we're going to talk about. So we're going to go downstairs and we're just going to start from the bottom and work our way up. So let's get started. Well, hello. Hello. Come on in. Yeah, a little different than the first time we did this when it was so beautiful outside a couple months ago. Yeah. All right. It's Nebraska for you. It is Nebraska for you. All right, so again, we're not going to do a full tour. Go back and check out that tour we did a couple months ago for everything. But uh, we are going to talk about our additions. And our first addition is the Schlage Encode Plus door lock with home key. Now, we had the level lock in here before. I really love this thing. I wanted one since the moment it came out. I actually ordered one on the day it came out. I couldn't use it at our apartment we were in at the time and I was pissed. But now we're in this place and I can use it, which is a beautiful thing. So home key is the key feature here. So it works flawlessly with your watch, works flawlessly with your phone. You just walk up to it and tap it and you're in. I've had zero issues with this. We had the level lock. I used the August lock in my last apartment and I love them both, but you know, occasionally you get the offline, you have to re-add it. I've had zero issues with this. We haven't had it long enough to worry about the batteries yet, but I haven't had a battery issue. It's been 100% flawless when we've tried to use it with our watch and our phone. And then of course the normal Siri functions just like any other home kit lock. Again, everything we're talking about today is Apple Home. Um, but I was really excited to get this and try it finally, and I'm loving it. Now, the new level lock just came out with home key, and I thought about getting it and doing a review, but if you saw our hardware out there, this matches so perfectly, I just think I'm going to leave it alone. I mean, home key is home key, so sorry, level. Maybe in the future I will, but anyway, I love that lock. All right, so the Nanoleaf uh, shapes. Now, I just ordered some more of these because it's bothered me that I haven't had enough of these, in my opinion. <laughs> So they were out of stock forever. They're back in stock. Unfortunately, they didn't make it for this video. This is the Nano Leaf Shapes. And when this is, um, when the whites are off, this is matte black. This is the matte black edition 
which was a special for Nana Lisa anniversary. I love these and I'm excited to get six more going in here. What's cool is it helps our pizza delivery people find us. Yeah. So we, we talk about our glowing door. Right. We had a little trouble with Apple Maps. I've since put in a correction, but people are having trouble finding us. So yeah, now we've got the glowing door. And just the pizza guy the other night said, thank you for telling me about the glowing door. All right, so I've switched to Eufy, the pan tilts. I got the special black edition, which they had at Target. Uh, that was a special Z2 Target. I love that black model. I had the Logitech Circle cameras in here. And even though I still have the Logitech Circle view outside the doorbell, and that's what I had in the last tour, you know, we really only have two options right now, that and the, the Wemo doorbell. I hate the fisheye on the Wemo. So I wanted to go back to the circle view and I will say with all software updates or whatever they've done, they've improved that a lot. It goes offline a lot less. I've had zero issues with it since then, but I was having issues with my Logitech circle cameras and they were going offline or no, no response. And since I switched to this Eufy, which is HomeKit secure video also, I've had zero issues. So I went back to Eufy there. We've uh, added more Acara security, uh, security accessories here. Go back and check my video out on security systems with cameras and what's the best way to secure your home. We uh, did a, a car push button, which you can activate several smart home features here. Some more door and window sensors. Um, but we added a lot of a car. Uh, we had some for that last video, but we've added some since. Down in my office, we added some NanoLeaf lines. Now, while we're talking about NanoLeaf, we talked about the shapes, we're talking about the lines. All the bulbs in this hallway behind Teresa were all nano leaf bulbs. And I love nano leaf in general, but I do not like their bulbs. And they're thread capable and they're supposed to be the greatest thing ever. But I don't know, maybe I'm the only person on the planet that has problems with them. I always get them offline. They're always no response. I don't like the fact that they don't turn real yellow and they don't turn real green, whereas Philips Hue does. So I switched back to Philips Hue and all those bulbs. Sorry, nano leaf. I still love you, but come on. Maybe I'm the only one, I don't know. Then I, I had an Annalee bulb in this lamp. I switched back to Philips Hue there. Out on this patio, we did a Eufy camera and we also did a uh, smart light, a smart bulb out in that light out there, which is Philips Hue. I added the Sonos Play 5 in this room. Gives me a nice, nice thump in here. Uh, let's see. I did another Eufy pan tilt in here that was also a Logitech circle camera. I went with the uh, pan tilt zoom inside again. And again, that special black version from uh, Target matches my black badass Orbi router. Then I also added a Roborock down here. That's their newest model uh, without the mop basically. And so I've got the S7 Ultra Max on the second level. I've got two of these, one down here and one in our master bedroom. And so I added that since that tour. All right, so we have got the Eve Smart Switch. So in this condo, I have had Lutron, I have had Brilliant, which we're gonna talk about Brilliant in a minute. And then I switched from a Lutron switch to the Eve Smart Switch. Now the Eve Smart Switch is Apple Home compatible. Eve is just famous for being, working with Apple Home, which is a fantastic thing. This is a thread enabled switch, which is great. So your thread network basically works as like a mesh network, you know, Wi-Fi, the more devices you add, you know, your, your device gets, your network gets crowded. Thread is actually the opposite. The more devices you have, they help each other out. So it's great that this is Thread, great that it's Apple Home. This is a one-way switch or a three-way switch. So I've got three switches controlling that spotlight in there. And so that's great that you can use it as a three-way switch. You do have to have a neutral wire, but the fact that this is a three-way three switch, which is cool, with those other two switches, I don't have to have three of these. I can just have one and makes the whole system smart and I don't need those switches anymore because everything can be used with Siri or Apple Home or whatever it is. So that's great. Now, the only one complaint is that it's not a dimmer. Now, in my case, I don't care about that, but it's just on and off. And it doesn't really have a button. It's just kind of a touch screen. It's very responsive. Some people miss that feeling of a button, but I like it because you don't have to aim for a little button. Um, it has that green light when it's on, and it doesn't matter if you use any of these switches. If that light came on, your, your light would turn green. Now those bulbs, I didn't go smart. A lot of, a lot of this is Philips Hue in here. Um, a lot of people swear by smart switches. I, I kind of mix and match. 
Um, but I did that because Philips Hue doesn't make a good bulb for that, that light. Um, so I wanted to control that in a smart way. And uh, so this is $49.95. There's cheaper switches out there, but I feel that this is very well made. Eve is so reputable, I think it's worth it. And that thread capability and the way Eve does thread is top notch. Um, so I love that. Um, but yeah, $49.95, not a horrible price. You know, if you had to do it all throughout your home, that might, that might add up. But anyway, the only other thing I wanted to mention is I did replace it with a, or a Lutron switch with that switch. You can see the difference. This is Eve. This is Lutron. So number one, you're, you're missing that button and that click, but you do get a little click with this. I don't know if you can hear that on camera, but so one thing I wanted to mention, since this was a three-way switch for me, this gang box in here is very crowded. And so there's a lot of wires back there. And if you look now, a normal light switch is even thinner than this, but the Eve is just a little thicker. And when you're trying to stuff a bunch of wires in a gang box, that matters. Now I made it work. And really, if that's my only complaint, that's, that's a good thing because like I said, I made it work and that's pretty crowded. And so if I can make that work, anybody can make it work. But yeah, so that's it. Eve did send this to me. I want to thank you for that. I want to do a dedicated video for Eve, but I can't because everything going on in my life. So I apologize, but definitely one that I wanted to call out in this video, but I really do like it. I've had zero issues with no response. Um, it's been great, but that's the same with every Eve product I've tried. So again, thank you Eve for sending this to me. Okay. Let's move on and go up to the next level. Okay, so here we are on our second floor. Now I have a motion switch and some hue switches on our stairway. Let's go back and check out that last tour, like I said, but we're just gonna jump right in to Brilliant. Now I had some Brilliant switches installed in that last tour, and then I decided to go all out again, and this whole level is Brilliant. And if you don't know, Brilliant is a smart switch that is Apple Home compatible. These are your switches. You got this touch screen, you control your lights, Sonos music, you have an intercom. You can control your thermostat. There are a ton of different products that work with Brilliant. Each of these have a camera that you can turn on and off. You can slide. Brilliant is such a cool concept. So I added one here. I've got one in the studio. I've got one over there. I've got one in our kitchen. So I did a video on Brilliant. It's one of the first videos I did on the channel when I went smart home on the channel. And I had them in my old apartment. And so go back and check out that video. And I was freaking in love with them. I love the fact that you can control your Sonos. You know, it's got a great interface for Sonos. Um, you got all your music selections here. In that apartment, Brilliant was flawless. And in, in that video, I, I went on and on about them and raved about them. But I don't know what has happened. But Brilliant, you've gone downhill. I don't know if it's new engineers or what it is. Once you get it set up, it's fine for the most part as far as brilliant controls go, but their new setup process is a real pain. So when you go to set one of these up, you use the brilliant app, you go through the setup process, and then it kind of forces you to get the newest software update where you used to be able to do that manually. And sometimes that software update is confusing because sometimes it takes an hour or so. So you sit there and wait and you think something's wrong and then it finally updates and then you can finally go through and add your brilliant. But man, adding a Brilliant switch used to be like a 15 minute process. Now it can be like an, an hour. I mean, I don't know what they've done, but they went backwards. Maybe there's a rhyme or reason to it. I don't know, but I don't like it. Now, once it's set up, everything about Brilliant works perfectly. But on, uh, let's see, I've got one, two, three, four, five. I've got, and one down in the garage, I actually added a, I took out the switch I had in our garage and put in a Brilliant. I've got six of these and of two of two of them, I could not add it to Apple home. And that's one of their claim to fame. They were, you know, one of the first on board with Apple home kit. And so there's one in this bathroom right here. And then the one in my studio for the life of me, I cannot get added to, added to Apple home. I've called brilliant tech support. They actually have a service in here where you can actually open it up to where that brilliant work on your switches remotely. It's a toggle, you can turn it off for privacy. I actually had them do that and they just told me to set it up again, which is where I'm at right now. I just did that, I haven't had a chance to call them back, but I still can't get them added. And it's very frustrating because obviously this is all home kit and I want it in Apple Home. So 
you know, there's, for the most part, these are working great, but it just shouldn't take that long to set up. And it used to not be that way. Brilliant. So what'd you do? And then the Apple Home, once again, that was also very easy back in the day. So they've just taken those two steps backwards. But once you get it set up, you know, I love the wallpapers. It works flawlessly. As far as Brilliant goes, I just, for two of them, I can't use Apple Home. Uh, the Sonos capability works great. The thermostat capability works great. I also bought these black skins, which since there's a matte black um, theme in this condo, I love that. I love the way they look. But man, $450, so $500 for these. And I've got six of them. I spent a lot of money on these to not be able to have them work the way they're supposed to. So man, brilliant. I used to love you, but I'm sorry, but you got to get your act together. Sorry. All right. So anyway, that was a previous, uh, that was in the previous tour, but I have added two since then. And unfortunately that didn't go so well. All right. So let's see what else we got. I think pretty much everything else in here we had before I moved my home. Oh, we did add a TV with the Sonos Ray. Sonos Ray is an AirPlay 2 speaker, so you can use the Sonos with Siri. Um, and then I did add this Pico remote. So the person sitting here can control Sonos, and then the person sitting in that chair can control Sonos with the Brilliant. Because again, once you do have them set up, they work flawlessly with the Sonos. Um, and everything in here works great with Apple Home. It's just these two over here for some reason. All right, so then I did add another Acara Smart button since that last tour. Coming into the studio. By the way, I want to point out, we got the grid, grid studio art. We had an old iPod sitting around and Teresa decided to take her stab at the grid studio art. So. Thank you, Teresa, for that special little present. That was nice. Um, all right, so in here, we switched to the Eve camera. Um, I believe I had the Ecobee camera in here before. So again, shout out to Eve. I love Eve, um, especially with their cameras as far as privacy goes. We added the Sonos Sub. I have a Sonos Beam behind us. We've got the surround. Before I had two uh, Sonos 5s in here but I switched to that. Um, so we got surround sound in this room now. Um, another little product I want to talk about. This is another one sent to me and I can't really install it here because I don't have the, the good spot for it. EVVR ever. So this is a relay switch that you put behind your light switch. So I'm going to show a little video here of our one apartment, um, our last apartment. When I did the smart home tour, I was actually asking suggestions because I had a single switch right next to an outlet. And it's very hard to do a um, smart switch that way. So I was asking for suggestions. This is a great way to fix any switch that you have existing where you wanna keep the outer switch. So maybe it's the aesthetics of it that you just really like your switch. Maybe they all match throughout your house, whatever it is. But if you put this smart relay behind it and it, it works flawlessly. Now I can't test this here because I don't have a switch to put it behind, but it, it, it's a great concept and I love the fact that it's HomeKit compatible. So this is a way to make any switch compatible and you don't have to switch your outer hardware. You just put this behind your switch. Now it's a little bulky and there's another little component to it. So you got to have some room in your gang box to make it happen, but it's a great concept and I want to thank them for sending this to me. Again, I wish I could do a dedicated video, but everything going on, I just, I just can't, but Awesome concept, especially if you like the aesthetics of your switches, especially on new houses when your builder is just put on all these cool switches and you just don't want to change it. You can go in here and put that relay behind there and make any of them smart. So very cool. All right. So then over here, it's another product that was sent to me and I want to say thanks air Versa this is the air purifier and um, the air, uh, air Versa Perel air purifier. This is a great air purifier. We've had it it's in here for a couple weeks. Want to do a dedicated video on it again, but I, I just can't. Um, so I'm going to look at some notes here because there's a few things that I wanted to make sure that I covered for air Versa, um, because I really do like it and I want to thank them for sending it to me. 
So it's $170 on Amazon. It's the first air purifier with thread. So again, we're talking about thread and the thread network. So it's the first air purifier that offered thread capability, which is fantastic. Let's see what else we got here. Um, covers about a 300 square foot room. So it's perfect for this room. Built-in air quality sensor. Um, HEPA filter, which is, takes out 99.97 of the airborne contaminants in a room. It has a very cool touch display. So you got the power button, you've got auto mode, you can set a timer, you got a sleep mode. Uh, this LED ring will change colors when the, air, when the air is bad quality, it'll change red. And I found in my testing that it changes very quickly. Um, so that's pretty awesome. Um, you can use the, um, it's called the, let's see, I didn't use it my, too much, the Sleep Point app, or you can just use Apple Home. I've just been using an Apple Home. In Apple Home, you can control on off, five different speeds, and then it'll actually show you the air quality in the Apple Home app as well. But if you go into the Sleep Point app, you basically have all the functions of this air purifier. Um, but I just find that it's one of those things where you just set it and leave it. So to know the status or the air quality or whatever, it's cool to have it in Apple Home. Or let's say I'm in here recording and I just want to turn it off. It's great to be able to do that with Siri. Um, it's very sleek looking. It feels very well made. And again, as far as air purifiers go, I feel that's very reasonably priced. Uh, let's see if there's anything else I wanted to mention here. Yeah, that's pretty much it. But I've been really happy with it. Um, and there's just not much to it. You just set it and go. But air purification is very important and it's a very popular thing. Um, so thanks, Airversa, for sending that to me. Sorry, Siri, I didn't ask you to do anything with Bluetooth, but that's okay. Um, let's see. I think that's it for new additions in the studio. So let's go upstairs. Okay, before we go upstairs, and this is actually kind of related to upstairs on our rooftop deck. Now, it's really cold here in Nebraska today. But I had started making a video for this situation, but we've got some projectors here and we used it for an outdoor projector. So when I say upstairs, it's because we, I wanted an out proje outdoor projector for movie night on our rooftop. So as we moved in here and the weather was still nice, we started watching movies on this thing and testing it. So I do have some footage that I'm gonna play here of what the setup looks like, but I wanna talk about it in here because it's freezing outside. All right, so this company, Hision, sent me this projector, it's a 1080p projector, it's a Wi-Fi projector, and I just wanted a nice way to set up a screen and watch movies on that rooftop. So I was looking for something, and originally I found this Xjimmy, which is a very popular projector brand, 1080p, um, and it uses Android TV. It has a fantastic interface, and um, it's a little more robust, but I will tell you that this right here is $650. So when, when Hishin asked me if I would try their projector and we were just happened to be moving in here when they did it and I had just bought this, I was sure, sure why not? So I thought I'd compare the two. This is only $169.99 and then we bought a screen which is $99.99 at Lowe's. And um, so you'd need a screen for this too. Now I'm not a big fan of indoor projectors so I specifically bought this to go outdoors. So this is not going to be an indoor projector type of situation here. I'm going to talk about it as an outdoor projector, which I think a lot of people could set up in their backyard. So anyway, I'm not, I just don't like indoor projectors. I think you gotta have the right room, the right lighting all the time. You buy a 4K projector and then you can't see it half the time. I'm just not a fan. All right, so I bought this little guy. Now, I decided that whether I use this one or this one, I was gonna use it with an Apple TV because I'm Apple Home. This has Android TV. I've used Android TV in the past. You know, I, I sell a lot of Google products with Silver Hammer. I've used Chromecast. I sell Chromecast to our customers. I'm very familiar with Android TV. So for $650, this has a much better interface. But if you hook up an Apple TV up to this little guy for so much less, you're gonna have your Apple TV interface and it's not gonna matter what happens with this. Because if you look at this, you look at some of my footage here, this interface is pretty cheap looking. I mean, you get what you pay for. It's perfectly fine. I had a little trouble getting it hooked up to Wi-Fi, but once I did, it, was, it worked great. You've got some buttons on here for your menu. It does come with this little remote. 
So all of that was fine. So basically you just need to get it hooked up to Wi-Fi. And then once you get it to that point, it's basically just hook up the Apple TV and switch that interface. So Teresa and I watched some movies. We used Apple TV to do it. You know, it's only 1080p, but on our rooftop, I didn't care. I don't need 4K up there. So this was a really great solution. And, you know, I'm going to try this one more this next year and see if I really get that much more out of it. This one's still 1080p. The image quality is going to be the same, but I just wasn't interested in the Android TV anyway. So this fixes that. And right now the new Apple TV is 130 bucks. So if you add that and this together, you're still way under this price. So I'm sorry, Hishin, I'm not too impressed with the interface and I'm not too impressed with your remote. But as far as actually just being a box to put on a screen, to add this to, it was great. And for the price and what I was using it for, it worked great for that. What do you think, Teresa? Yeah, I thought it was, uh, it was fun to watch the movie up there and have it be portable like that. Right, and so we had, you know, and then for sound, now, as, as you might have seen in some of our recent videos, we've got a train that runs by here. And so up on our rooftop, the, the train was the problem for movies. But what we did is we just got our two AirPods Max. We used the share audio. We put those in noise canceling mode. We watched movies up there. We actually watched some TV shows up there. We didn't hear the trains at all. So you add some Apple products to this little guy and it becomes a really cool portable. That's the other thing about this is very portable. So I got a little basket back there with the power cord and the remote and this Apple TV. And then we got the screen up there and you can see some of that footage here of the screen set up and it worked great. So I'm going to try this out. This one was sent to me. This one was not this one I bought. I wish I would have waited because I would have just been perfectly fine with this. Now that I bought this, of course, I'm going to try it, but I'm going to tell you right now, I'm not going to use Android TV. Yeah. The biggest problem we had to solve was the stand. Like how do you solidly show oh, yeah. and work through the projector? I'm very glad you said that. So basically I bought a tripod very similar to my um, microphone tripod, which I can't see at the moment. Um, but, and put a tripod on this and, um, it worked great. And you can see that in the footage here. Um, you just have to get it to the right level of the screen. It does have an adjustable knob for a stand. It does have an adjustment for the concaveness of your screen. You know, depending on the angle, there is a setting for that, which worked great. Um, so you basically can adjust this to any angle you need to. We had a huge screen out there watching movies and TV under the stars. It was awesome. So. Anyway, that was an addition, and I look forward to using it again this summer. And I'll try this one out, but Hishin, I'm perfectly content with this. So thanks again for sending it to me. And this fixed any problems I had. Also, Teresa, before we move upstairs, I do want to mention something else while we're talking about Apple TVs. I did Apple add the new, brand new Apple TV to this, the one that just came out. Um, and the only thing I want to discuss with that, I, I've been asked to um, do a review. Do I think it's worth the upgrade? I really don't think there's enough to it to, to do a video on it myself. If you're curious about that, Shane Watley, my boy, did a great video on whether or not you should upgrade to that Apple TV. So go back and check out his channel and check out that, that video. But one thing I did want to mention, and maybe I'm a one-off, but this is the new USB-C Siri remote. And the one that I received in the box was bad. I don't... There's nothing to stop here. Oh. The device is on your network. <laughs> but so I very, I don't know if I've ever received a bad Apple product out of the box, but I did have to have this replaced. They sent me a new one in two days. It was no big deal but the Siri remote didn't work. Um, so you get this cool new USB-C remote and then it didn't work. And then also just for the heck of it, I'll share that I did get the new iPad Pro for no other reason than I'm George and I wanted the new iPad Pro. <laughs> um, I had the old one, it was perfectly fine. I don't notice much difference, but hey, I've got the newest one and that allows me to sleep at night. All right, now we're gonna go upstairs for real. Okay, now that we're upstairs, this will be very brief. We just added some Lutron motion detectors in Teresa's closet and her office over here. Again, go back and check out our tour. Uh, you can see more about what we had going on in here. And then we got her the orange HomePod Mini. We added another Pico remote for Sonos uh, 
SL that we got in here. And then over here in the master bedroom, we added the Brilliant. Now this is the Brilliant that does work with Opal Home. So this has been great once I got through that stupid setup process. We did a video on the Twinkly Squares, so check that out. We got the Twinkly Squares over there. And then I've had this sitting here. I have not got to set it up, but we're gonna put this up on the rooftop as well. The Twinkly Festoon lights. Some smart lights, HomeKit compatible. Um, they're pretty cool lights and I'm looking forward to setting that up. And we'll do a update sometime next year, but anyway. Then we already had the Twinkly in here, as you know. And while I'm by my closet, I wanna really quickly say, screw you, Kanye. If you don't know about me and my Adidas collection, I was a big Yeezy guy, and now you've pretty much made them null and void. I can't wear them. So you've ruined my entire Yeezy collection. Screw you, Kanye, for many reasons, but mm. All right, that's it. Let's go downstairs and wrap it up. Okay, so that's the tour. Thank you very much for hanging out with me today. Thanks for letting me feel normal for the day. I think a lot of you know what's going on in my life, but thank you. And before we wrap this up, another thing that's happened since my last video is Matter. The Matter release. This is very exciting in the smart home world. How did I not mention that at the beginning? So for those of you that don't know, Matter is the smart home alliance that's going to bring Apple and Google and Alexa to play nice. It's been released. These products are starting to roll out. So companies like Philips Hue, Eve, Acara, they're all going backwards compatible on their products, which is cool. So that for those of us that have all this stuff, Matter is going to be part of it. So we're going to be able to start using uh, Apple Home with Google Hubs and cats and dogs living in humanity together. It's just going to be a beautiful thing. And I will say another shout out to Nanoleaf in a bad way. Nanoleaf's going to make you buy new bulbs and new products to be Matter compatible, whereas Hue and Akara and Eve are thinking of those people that already have it. So shame on you, Nanoleaf. I know there's a process to all this, so I'll forgive you. But anyway, so matter. It's rolled out. It's here. Yay! All right. So that's it. Again, thanks for hanging out with me today. So nice to be normal. Thanks for bearing with me through this process. Your support has meant so much to me. It's ridiculous. I don't want to cry again, but from around the world, every thought, every prayer fuels my positivity and my ability to fight what's going on in my personal life. Thank you so much. I want to get back to normal. Um, we are going to take the week off for Thanksgiving, and then we're going to Chicago for the weekend after Thanksgiving. And just, it's very important and what's going on with me to spend time with my family, with Teresa and Delaney and Garrett, her fiance. So I'm very much looking forward to that trip. And then as soon as we get back, I really hit it hard with the fight of the big C. I didn't want to mention that word today because I wanted to be normal, but you know what I'm talking about. So come back for updates for that. I, of course, keep you updated because I can't tell you how much it means to me, how, much, how many people cared about me. I didn't know such a thing existed. People around the world actually care about me. Thank you. Thank you so much. But through this process, I'm going to try to sprinkle in this normal content. I'll give you updates on what's going on. And I want to thank Airversa. I want to thank Eve. I want to thank EVVR or Ever. And I want to thank Hision for the products they sent me. Uh, thank you very much. Sorry I couldn't give you the dedicated videos that you deserved. But I got a lot going on and uh, I just couldn't. But hopefully this suffices. But thank you so much. And I hope a continued relationship in the future. Because I will get back to normal. I will kick this thing's ass. And I'll be back. Back to Smart Home and Security George, I promise. So until my next update, thanks for joining us. Peace and love.